fall you want is a quick fall, then let's go. <laughs> Yo, what's up guys, it's Oreo. So a quick rundown on who I actually am. Um, I do play competitive. Uh, I came on top eight in the official Paragon competitive lead that big tournament with Team Oxygen, Team Finesse, and all the top competitors. We place top eight in winner's bracket in that. Um, so I'm not just some random guy just giving you guys tips and tricks. I actually played the game and I play competitively and I'm in the I'm in the scene. I'm in the community um, and I just want to reach out to you guys and help you guys uh, to become better players and you will actually get better if you follow some of these tips and tricks that I do. Um, but starting off, what you want to do is drop a ward in the enemy's jungle, especially on the green buff. If you can cover green buff in that, that first camp that's closest to you, you'll be golden because a lot of people, they go and they, um, this is how how, if you guys never play jungle this is how you run jungle you take the first camp that's closest to mid lane then you go to the right and take the second camp and then you go hit green buff or if you're chimera they usually hit the third camp and then they go hit green buff but at this time the health is really low especially for characters like um kalari and sarah those are the easiest ones to kill um and once you go in there and you kill them you'll be over level you'll get over leveled then uh the the counterpart mid laner Alright guys, so I'm going to cover the build very briefly. Um, you want to start off with your health potion to cast tokens. After that, you want to move on to your uh, quartz blades. Get both of those. And then this is optional for each player depending on how the match is going. You can either get your brawler's ward next, but I usually don't. I build up my quartz blades all the way and then I get my brawler's ward. I will drop my health potions and cast tokens to fill up my brawler's ward. And then I will start building my wind cover blade. What you want to do with these wind cover blades is just put on the attack speed because you'll be hitting pretty hard, but you won't be hitting fast enough. So if you put on the, the uh, two attack speed on these, um, you'll be you'll be squared away. Uh, then you just farm. You want to get that hydroverser next, and then top off your wind cover blades. Finish building those, and then you can drop your quartz blades and start building your staff of adamant. Um, You'll get both stats for adamants and at this point you'll be at full build uh this is the strongest hitting uh build and you can ha you can either optimize to have more uh more mana with the staff of adamant but you'll hit way less but off of the hydroverse here uh you'll you'll your max damage power is 360 something i believe um but that you only get more mana i don't suggest you really do that unless you really use a lot of mana um, I suggest you stick with the Brawler Ward more for a competitive side um, because you hit for 370 something. I believe it is 370, 76. Also, another thing I have on here that's optional is a Stasis Gem. This is going to um, take over your Staff of Adamant or your Brawler's Ward. I don't necessarily say you should use the Stasis Gem um, unless you're being targeted all the time. But if you're being targeted and you're not getting away, you're not doing your job right. Um, but this is on there uh, as optional for your staff adamant stock with three and your brawler sword stock with three i also do have a blink charm on here um if you find yourself needing a blink charm it is here it's not optimized for the build it's just there for like that that early mid game where people like to rotate a super bunch uh that can get you out of there but if you are being rotated on you really can't escape um you're not doing your job right you really should not need um a blink charm or a stasis gym uh, when you're playing Wraith, you shouldn't even be that far into a fight like that. Alright guys, so here's some tips and tricks to make you a better Wraith player. In a team fight, you are basically the observer. You are the, the person that's going to guarantee if your team gets out or if you're going to be able to save certain people. You need to be able to think it ahead of time, kind of like chess, to know like who their initiator is, who's going to start the fight, recall them back, get them out of there. You do not want them to get the upper hand on you. And this also goes into engaging into fights. You do not want to engage in a fight with invis you do not want to go uh gank somebody using your invisibility because in higher level play in competitive play what tends to happen is that you you pop up on that map you, they're fighting 
uh, the whole team's gonna rotate. That's just how it is. It doesn't matter if you went over there using your invis. Say you didn't get spotted by a ward. You went over there, da da da. When you do attack, you're going to pop on the map and they are going to rotate. And if you do, if you did not kill the people right then and there, that you're gonna get punished for it. It's just it's that simple. So don't use that. Use the, your invis to get out of a fight. If you're doing what you need to be doing, you're putting wards down. You can go and gain somebody without being spotted. You don't need to waste your invis to go and gank somebody. You just really don't. Use that to protect your teammates. That's pretty much what it, it's for now uh, in competitive combo wise. Your combo is a sniper shot, two basic shots, a recall, and then another sniper shot. Your sniper shot is where you're getting your maximum damage from, so you don't want to be missing that. So to ensure you actually land the sniper shot, just recall the person and shoot. It gives you a little tick mark on where they're gonna when they're gonna be present back in that spot. And you can easily just time it and you'll always hit it just one-on-one -on -one fighting somebody shoot where don't shoot where they're currently at shoot where they're going to be if they're walking left to right you need to be able to time that like oh they're going to go left now shoot they're going to go right now shoot don't shoot where they're at because you're going to miss they even said it they said that his bullets actually don't have travel time the trail that you see is just there so you know that he shot and where his bullet has gone there is no travel time with his bullet it is instant so if you're shooting somebody where they're at and they're if they're constantly moving to the left if you shoot where they're at you're going to miss because they're not there in that spot in that instant anymore so as you see like with the guy in the beginning all i did was just shot where he's gonna where he was gonna go i didn't have to turn my my aiming he just automatically went over there like they're going to walk into your shots so you might as well just let them instead of wasting your time trying to figure out oh let me shoot here let me shoot here let me shoot here because all that's going to do is slow you down because your movement speed is decreased and they're as since they're running they're going to be gaining ground away from you and yes you can just recall them but imagine you you know you're you're, you're optimizing your shots you're optimizing your damage they're going to die it's, it's that simple so those are just the tips that i can give you for race in terms of fighting and um, engaging fights and getting out of fights so guys i hope you like this video slap a like if it helps you out comment if you have any questions and thanks for watching also comment other builds that you guys would like to see i do have a really amazing graystone build you will not die <laughs> at all and you do a shit ton of damage i also have a countess build you guys just tell me who you guys will want to see out of all the list of characters in the game thanks for watching i'm metal and i'm out